welcome, welcome, welcome back. Welcome to Comp Talk. All right, for those of you just joining, joining us, tonight's guests are Elspeth Corman, English professor at Barnard College, and rhetoric and composition scholar Joey Giovanni. All right, tonight's focus is working with disabled students. Up next will be dis. <gasps> What's my accent? Oh shit. Um. <laughs> so like, just you can get it. Up back next, to we'll be discussing the topic of writing workshops for disabled students and teaching autobiography in the composition classroom. Now, before we begin our discussion of writing workshops, I'd like to begin with a quote from Mark Mossman, a disabled English professor at Western Illinois University. In his essay, Acts of Becoming, Autobiography, Frankenstein, and the Postmodern Body, Mossman discusses how autobiography has proved to be very helpful in the classroom. Mossman states that writing autobiography, the narration of an experience by a disabled person to a reader or immediate listener, enables a marginalized voice to be heard, which in turn causes cultural practice and stereotype roles to change. Mossman also reveals that he often requires his students in his composition and literature courses to write personal narration and experience pieces when he claims, and he, and he claims that this has demonstrated time and time again that teaching writing is linked with teaching empowerment, self-exploration and discovery, and the ability to have a voice in the functioning of our culture. All right. Not only does Mark Mossman value autobiography in the composition classroom, but Thomas, oh, I'm sorry, G. Thomas Kosa, a professor of English at Hofstra University here on Long Island, believes this genre to be useful for both disabled and non-disabled students. Uh, Corsa discusses the power that autobiography has to represent disability in ways that challenge the us usual cultural scripts. Um, but he also warns that critics on the right may want to, may, may criticize autobiography in the classroom because this may perpetuate the silence of people with aberrant bodies. And he also claims that those on the cultural left may be critical of the representation of disabilities in the genre in that they could perpetuate the sentimental and heroic narratives that may create the terrifying, pitiable, or inspiring stereotypical narrative. So, to avoid perpetuating these stereotypes in, when teaching life writing, Costa reminds us that disability is a cultural construct, as we mentioned before, and that it is important to address disability not in the individual body, but in the body politic, to understand how to better deconstruct cultural ideologies. Kosser ends his essay by suggesting that we look to autoethnography because of its capacity to speak of disability as a condition that is affirmative rather than destructive, defining rather than confining. So, that said, what do you guys think about including teaching autobiography in the composition classroom? Have you done this before, Elspeth? In fact, Sylvia, <clears throat> It's not quite necessary at Bernard College. Oh, really? Uh, why? why? Well, you see, all of our students, except for the one, were not disabled. I see. However, I can tell you, after my book came out, Riding in the Dark, I have written, oh, I am in the process of writing an autobiography myself about oh, really? the challenges of Sorry. working at such a prestigious school. I see. So, in your book that you, Writing in the Dark, was it? Yes, yes writing, writing in, the dark. in the Dark. You only talk about Alejandro. Yes. But you don't talk about any disabled, other disabled students. Have you, you've only worked with one. That is correct. So you would say you're an expert on this subject. I would. One book expert on this subject. Look at her. Look at her. Yes. Hey, okay, so Joe, 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 would you consider using this as a future composition instructor? Would you use autobiography in the classroom, regardless disabled, non-disabled students? Well, look, there's one thing I learned from my rhetoric and composition education, is that writing is real important, like. 
It is! That's why we have this show. Comp talk. <laughs> so, I've used it. Alright. Alright. I, I, I've I used it in the past. I know that I'm, I'm not teaching at the moment. I'm focusing on other things, but... Uh, I used it myself, and I and I have to agree with Mossman and Costa. It does give the students a sense of empowerment, gives them a voice, agency, a place to speak from. Okay, so wow, wow, brilliant insight, Elspeth. Joey, thank you so much. Hey. Now we've chatted about autobiography and life writing, but now I want to talk to you about this real great lady. Actually, a good friend of my hairdresser, Kathy. Her name's Jacqueline Rinaldi. She teaches rhetoric and literature over at Sacred Heart University in Connecticut. Again, great lady and real classy. And her nails, they're like butter. She does them herself. Anyway, she did this writing workshop with some people who had multiple sclerosis, and she was just amazing. She told sorry. me... Sorry. It's okay, Joey. You're a popular guy. You gotta I'm really show, sorry. You got a show coming up tomorrow. I know. Okay. I got it. It's okay. No, no worries. No worries. Um, but she told me their lives, their lives changed. I swear, she said they just completely changed. So Rinaldi and her friend, Ann Specta, they did this, no relation to Phil. <laughs> um, Phil Specta? Yeah, no relation, no relation. Oh my God, that guy. I, yeah, just a bad joke. That guy. <laughs> All right, so they did this workshop to create a space where the participants of the group could write about their disability in ways in which they could find it therapeutic. All right. So in the 10-week seminar, Rinaldi and Specta focused on expressivist and social constructionist pedagogy to help the group evolve personal and community voices. Rinaldi explains how participants grew to change their rhetorical stance to regain a sense of their identity and reposition the self that was previously marginalized by our culture's mechanized construct of illness. Rinaldi ends her piece discussing how rhetoric has the power to heal. The carrot cake's good, good. But has been overlooked in the profession and posits it may well be time to explore the therapeutic potential of the reflective prose that we ask students to write in a more traditional classroom setting. So, that is a big topic. What do you think about workshops for disabled students on college campuses? Before you answer, I want to just, you know, throw this out here. <clears throat> Would offering writing workshops function to help students find therapeutic ways to write about their disability? Or do you believe it would further marginalize these students? Please discuss. Just tell me how you feel. It's no big whoop. We don't judge here on Cop Talk, except when we have that American Ideology special episode. That's the only time we judge. But feel free. To tell me how you feel. I think autoethnography is what you got to do here in this situation. It's what you were talking about earlier. It's autoethnography. Exactly. Exactly, my friend Jacqueline. Well, a friend of a friend. My hairdresser Kathy. Hairdresser Kathy. She know. You know. Rinaldi. She did this. And it's amazing. These writing workshops will help. They, I promise you. And I actually know. We're going to talk about them later in the show. But... This boy, Noah, I asked him about writing workshops, and he said, I think it's a great idea. If I, and he's blind, like your friend Alejandro. He, too, is blind. And he said that he would not feel marginalized if there were to be a writing workshop for him on campus at Colorado State University. That's over in Fort Collins. CSU. CSU. They call it CSU. They do yeah, call yeah. it CSU. I Don't know. be confused with California State University because it's Colorado State University. These are the Aggies. But I can go on and Not on about West this. Conference. But let's, let's, let's hear from Elspeth. We didn't hear from her. Well, before I was distracted by the carrot cake, I was listening, and what came to me was that at Bernard College, it's not likely that we will need this resource, but I suppose that at other colleges, it would be quite useful. At other colleges, like CSU. Like CSU. You think you're, you, 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 you um, think your university is more okay. special than other universities and schools? Well, well okay, a right. uh, time, time, Joey, time, and, you know. Oh, what a show. What a show we've had tonight. I'm adulpated by all the brilliant talk. We're going to take a quick break. 
but we'll be back with some tips and suggestions for how to work successfully with disabled students in the composition classroom. Cat talk! Have some cake! Cat right. talk!